Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk, and thank you very much for joining with us today. My name is Koja Mamoto from CyberNet Systems at Japan. CyberNet is an Elite Channel partner and software partner of ANSYS. Apart from selling CS software and providing technical support and professional services, we also develop our own CA software, many of which are implemented as extensions to ANSYS software. The product we are going to show you today, MultiScale.sim, is also one of them. It is a free integrated add-on tool for ANSYS software that can be used for multiscale simulation and analysis. We believe that MultiScale.sim can contribute to your product development process in a wide range of fields. So, I'm going to introduce the product outline and some analysis examples today. So, this is the agenda. First, I will talk a little bit about the multiscale analysis and the materials multiscale analysis can be applied to. This introduction should give you an idea about how you can use multiscale.sim in your product design process. Then, we will look at the functional overview of our product. I do not plan to go into technical details extensively, but we will discuss enough to understand the whole analysis process. Next, we'll show you some analysis examples. There are so many, there are so many analysis results. Uh, however, today I I'd like to introduce only a few use cases coupling with ANSYS product. This is because the biggest advantage of multiscale.sim is the complete integration with ANSYS Workbench. Multiscale.sim can generate synergy by linking the various ANSYS product, such as ANSYS Composite Prepost, ANSYS Data Explorer, and Granter, and so on. Finally, I will do a quick recap of what we discussed. Okay, so some of you may already know about multiscale analysis, but I'd like to start by giving a basic overview so that everyone gets a little bit of a background. I will explain about multiscale analysis in detail by using this example of honeycomb sandwich structure. They make a significant contribution to weight reduction of aircraft or solar panels and so on. It consists of honeycomb-shaped core layer that contains a large amount of air and skin layer that is more rigid than the core. This material has a non-homogeneous structure when you look at it from a micro-scale perspective. Core layer has non-homogeneous structure in sub-millimeter scale. Skin layer materials changes depending, depending on the case. If you use fiber reinforced plastic, then its non-homogeneous structure is in sub-micron order scale. Materials' behavior for each layer strongly depends on this non-homogeneous structure. In terms of calculation cost, it is unrealistic to directly model these non-homogeneities and incorporate them into the shape model of the actual product. Because the actual product can be several meters, so there is a large gap between the actual product and the microstructure scale like you can see on the right. Inevitably, there is going to be a huge number of elements if this microstructure was to be modeled directly. So, how should we resolve this problem? That is where multiscale analysis comes into the picture. Let's try to resolve this problem based on multiscale analysis. I will explain the modeling approach from three different viewpoints, micro, meso, and macro. During microscale approach, analysis is performed using the model that actually represents a non-homogeneous structure. The stress distribution due to inhomogeneity can be observed in detail but it is generally not recommended in terms of calculation cost. On the other hand, mesoscale model means the shape in which the inhomogeneity of each layer is simplified by homogeneous solid two elements. Accuracy of results can be significantly degraded if the core region is filled with the same property as a metal making the wall. 
So the homogenized coherent elements are replaced by equivalent material properties that represent the mechanical properties of honeycomb structure. The macro scale approach uses an analytical model with a higher level of abstraction. In other words, thickness information is represented by only one element that also has equivalent material constants of layered structure. This is an example for analysis results by each approach using simple boundary conditions. Counter images are showing the displacement of the component for out of plane direction. In the microscale model, it can be observed that the displacement distribution on the wave is caused by non homogeneity of the core layer region. This cannot be observed in the homogenized meso and macro scale model. The results of such reduction mean the averaged results within the microscopic structure. You can see that the maximum displacement value is almost the same in all three different approaches. It is very important to obtain accurately equivalent material constants in order to simplify the model while keeping analysis accuracy. Now, let's move on to see a functional overview of multiscale dosim. I have summarized the requirement for multiscale analysis from a micro and mesoscale viewpoint. The information is broadly divided into basic features and usability. The most important feature is homogenization analysis, colored in brown. The final goal of homogenization analysis is to predict the anisotropic equivalent material constants of composite, and it is composed of three analysis phases. You can see the details on the right. When we want to measure the material behavior by FEM analysis in general procedure, we have to define the same shape and boundary conditions as a coupon test piece used in the real test. However, it is enough to use only one unicell model representing the non-homogeneity of microstructure in the case of homogenization analysis. The conditions of cyclic symmetry for all directions are automatically defined by our product on the unit cell. Then, the virtual material test with an external load is performed while satisfying those conditions. These animations show the image of deformation shape for uniaxial tension test for two directions and peer sharing test. Actually, multi-skilled sim can freely define any deformation load. The output of this virtual material test is macroscopic material response. Uh, in this image, a stress-strain curve is showing. Finally, we can get equivalent material constants as a result of cow fitting. You will be extremely satisfied about usability because multi-skilled sim is completely integrated in ANSYS workbench by the ACT. You don't need to worry about running another GUI because most of the conditions for homogenization analysis can be set on the mechanical GUI. Multiscale DOSIM also provides a template to automatically create a microscale model, which is implemented in Design Modular and Space Claim. I will show each feature in a little bit more detail. First step is about a template to create microstructure. It is not realistic to make microstructure manually by general CAD tool due to its complexity. What you can see here is a sum of the microstructure which can be created using our tool. The solid model is created automatically based on the geometrical information such as volume fraction of filler and so on. Unfortunately, there is not enough time to explain detail, so I skip this slide with only this rough explanation. Once the unicell model of microstructure has been created, it is used to conduct virtual material tests to obtain equivalent material constants. As you can see, multiscale dosim allows you to identify material constants for many types of material behavior. All materials models support anisotropic behavior. Most of the cases other than structure analysis are treated as linear problems. On the other hand, Various nonlinear material behaviors can be taken into account depending on the phenomenon considered. T 
typical characteristics are shown on the graph at the bottom of the slide. The most basic output is a stress strain curve. You can check the response of composite composed of elastic plastic or hyperelastic materials. Creep and stress relaxation characteristics can also be acquired for any deformation mode. These tests can be very expensive in real tests because you have to observe the behavior for a very long time, such as days or years. Virtual material testing has a great advantage in obtaining such properties, which normally takes a long period of time in real testing. Okay, let's move on to the analysis example using multiscale sim. We have many analysis examples conducted in Japan. But today, I will show you some use cases focused on collaboration with ANSYS product due to limited time. Analysis using multiskill.sim are mainly performed on the ANSYS mechanical GUI and design modeler or space grain for creating microstructure. Of course, you can import the data from external CAD if you create manually. As I have shown you so far, Modernization analysis focused on a very limited region to obtain equivalent material constants of composite. Limited region means specific layer in the case of laminated materials. It is effective to collaborate with ANSYS composite prepost when you want to know the material property for laminated structure. ANSYS composite prepost has a function to predict properties of laminated structure using stacking theory. In other words, you can easily obtain the material properties for any lamination pattern if you have prepared the material constants for a single layer. Composite prepost also provides a convenient method to predict the fiber orientation or cross angle after press molding. You can perform more accurate analysis results of the product manufactured by press molding if you prepare the cross-angle dependent material constants from homogenization analysis. In our proposed method, the link between microscale and macroscale is achieved by using equivalent material constants. Therefore, we can work with any FEM analysis tool. ANSYS LS Dyna and Maxwell are examples for ANSYS product which can be coupled with multiscale dot sim. It is easy it is very easy to link because these products can be directly import material constants stored in engineering data on ANSYS workbench. We guess that it is effective to register material responses and material constants obtained by multiskill.sim in GrantMI if you want to manage the material database in more advanced manner. Moreover, you can develop a case study simulation using various design variables by using it together with ANSYS Design Explorer because all these coupled systems are implemented in the ANSYS Workbench platform. Today, I would like to introduce the idea of the collaboration between GrantMI and MultiSkill.sim. We always try to optimize the characteristics of the product when designing something. So here, we search for the optimum material, not the shape. In this case, elastic modulus is used as a design variable. Normally, this design variable is used as a discrete value when using a homogenized metal material. However, in the case of composite, the material properties can be controlled so that elastic modulus can be set as continuous value. Once the optimum modulus is obtained, we search the grant database for the composite material with that the modulus value. In the grant database, a large amount of material property can be prepared in advance using the homogenization analysis. We think that real material tests should be prepared in the limited number of cases. It is not realistic to do the case study based on a real test with all possible combinations. Using the homogenization analysis introduced today, you can add material constants under various conditions that cannot be performed in actual test to the database. Here is a just example to make material database for lattice structure by means of virtual material testing. Some input information for homogenization analysis are set as design variable, 
and determine the combination of these variables used for actual analysis. Anisotropic elastic constants are only pre predicted in this case, and we set three design variables as shown here. Uh, there are many kinds of topology in lattice. This time, 30 patterns of lattice topology is adapted. Porosity and height of unit cell are set as the geometrical parameter. Porosity can be controlled by changing the filler sequence. The graph shown at left is a result of by plotting material constants in which horizontal and vertical axes are adapted as Young modulus for x direction and shear modulus for x y direction respectively. Different shape of plot means a difference in lattice topology. And color means the value of porosity. Colored closer to the red means a larger filler thickness. We can confirm that both Young modulus and shear modulus are increased with increasing filler thickness. However, we can see that it can be classified into two point clouds with different characteristics. One has a high sensitivity of Young modulus and the other ha has a high sensitivity of shear modulus. The overview of the model and the equivalent stress distribution on the deformed shape are shown for one representative point belonging to each cluster. The model at point A has many pillars oriented diagonally with respect to the tensile direction. At point B, there are no diagonally oriented pillars and all are oriented in the tensile direction and its vertical direction. It can be seen that stress is concentrated on the pillar parallel to the load direction during uniaxial tension test and the diagonal pillars during shear deformation. In this way, the elastic modulus of the lattice structure strongly depends on how the pillars are oriented. A person's ratio shows more complicated characteristics. It changes in a drastic manner depending on the lattice structure. The Poisson's ratio of xy component varies from about minus 0.3 to 0.5. For yz component, it varies from about 0.1 to 1.0, even though the Poisson's ratio that makes up the filler is about 0.3. Now let's take two design conditions as an example to show what kind of deformation is being made. Point A has a Poisson's ratio for YZ component that exceeds 1.0, whereas the Poisson's ratio for XY component is almost zero. Actual lattice structure is shown here. As you can see that there is, a, there is almost no change in the Y direction, even if the specimen is pulled in the X direction. This is because the diagonally oriented pillars try to move outward in the y direction when they shrink in z direction. On the other hand, when tensioning in the y direction, the diagonal pillars move in the direction of reducing the thickness. In this way, geometric rotation strongly affects the macroscopic material behavior. Poisson's ratio at point B is also changing by the same reason. In this structure, Despite doing tensile testing in the x direction, the model extends in the y direction as well. This means a negative Poisson's ratio. We need to prepare the large material database in order to make the best use of the characteristics of the lattice structure. This process can be achieved very efficiently by virtual material testing. So, we are reaching the end of today's presentation. I'd like to finish my presentation while showing the slide to summarize what we discussed. We are also exhibiting at the virtual booth during this event, so I will be grateful if you could come to our booth when you, when you are interested in the detail. Thank you very much for your attention and we are looking forward to working with you. Goodbye.